Hello, I'm Michael. And I'm Eric. And we're here with Cinnabar Wright of Phoenix Tea House and Gong Fu Girl. Uh, and so we're ready to talk tea. Um, yeah. So, hello. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> um, go ahead, Eric. I just said thanks for, thanks for being on the show. Yep. Um, so uh, you recently posted a, um, a blog post on Going for Girl about tea in the desert, um, and that kind of gave us the idea of, of having this um, non-traditional, if you will, tea cultures um, talk. And um, so why don't, you, why don't you start us off by telling us a little bit about um, how you came to write that post and what you found and those kinds of things. Okay. Well, first I would say um, more lesser-known traditions than um, less traditional, because that's yeah, more accurate. Yeah. But <laughs> yes, but, lesser-known um, traditions. <laughs> so I, I came across that information because I was, I was looking up something on the Tuaregs, which are the, the group that lives in Mali, and um, I happened to find that musical group and that, that song on T, and then that led to this whole... Uh, sort of getting back into reading some information about the uh, that particular method of serving and and uh, and making tea. That and so the in Mali that particular tradition is kind of similar to what they do in Morocco, which is that they make tea, uh, which is generally gunpowder, and they usually add mint and lots and lots of sugar to it. But I that the video was I think one of the best that I'd seen. Although I, I do have a collection really? of various yeah. videos from that area of the world that I've that I've saved to YouTube because I keep coming across them. But it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting to watch because it was I mean it was actually not that different from in a lot of ways from like Gong Fu Cha from a Chinese right. way. Right. Right. Um, so uh, what's the history of how just a, maybe it's a long history, but what's the short version of how tea got to that part of the world? Well, uh, colonialism, obviously. Um, okay. <laughs> although, well, I wasn't sure if it was, you know, land route way, way back in the day, or if it was... No, no, no. I mean, there, there's, a, there's some um, commerce, but... Imperialist in invaders, you know. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Western colonialism, basically, is, is the reason that... that uh, a lot of things are the way they are in different uh, African countries, including the right. tea industry in East Africa, obviously, right. or maybe not obviously, but um, but of course in in Morocco, um, the colonial power was France, so it's not quite as as obvious a connection. But I think what I think one thing that's interesting is that Africa imports. I mean, various African countries import tons and tons of tea from China. Like mm -hmm. we're the, they're one of the, the biggest consumers of green tea from China, which is which a lot of people don't know. But that's the reason is because it's consumed in in uh, that traditional way of making it. Right. Well, Morocco, I know which is I, a I, oh, blend that lots of people have heard of, is gunpowder green, right? From yeah, mm -hmm. China is based on that. So right, makes right, sense. and I know that I know that um, like per capita consumption, it, it you know fluctuates every few years or whatever. But per capita consumption of tea is um, usually or often the number one country um, for that is Turkey. You know, yeah. which, you know, when people say, "Well, where do they drink tea all the time?" People say England or China or Japan, and it's like, yeah. well. Been to Turkey, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. And if, and if you talk to anyone who has been to Turkey, they'll talk about the fact that just walking down the street, there are there are tea vendors everywhere. Right. Uh, and uh, there, I mean, you can't you can't get away from it. <laughs> so that, that's you much can't more. Buy food. something without having tea with the person yeah. who's selling it to you. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's it's um, a part. Uh, it's part I, of I commerce. Think it's kind of, I think it's kind of interesting that that Turkey consumes more tea that's 
I mean, Turkey is a tea growing country, but it doesn't seem like consumption of tea in Turkey is um, largely Turkish tea. I mean, mm. the tea consumed in Turkey comes from Sri Lanka and other places, but um, because the production is not nearly large enough to suit the demand because the demand's so high. Mm. Right, right. Um, since we're sort of wandering around the world here, I'll just throw in that uh, that uh, I'm drinking a tea right now, a black tea from um, northern Iran. So uh -huh. um, that's another another area that often doesn't get talked about um, a lot in in you know your typical conversations about tea. So right. um, and is it really really sweet? It is. It is quite mm -hmm. sweet. Yeah. Um, okay. I actually. Uh, had I had Kimun uh, Kimun Haya this morning, and yeah. then switched to this, and I was like, "Holy moly, this is like sugar in comparison." Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's um, just it just you didn't add sweetener. It's just sweet. I didn't add sweetener. It's just sweet. It's a, it's a very, um, I mean, it's not sweet like a piece of candy, but it's yeah. it's it's a very sweet sensation. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Just yeah, sweet. Like, I I've had a couple different different uh, black teas from Iran and they were both really sweet and really smooth and and mm -hmm. quite delicious and of course in in Iran they they use samovars they're a little bit different from the Russian samovars but they're and they're they tend to be really beautifully made but um, you know that that's how they would would consume that so they're, tea. so they're yeah. brewing like a concentrate and then adding water yeah is there a is there a um, a ceremony around that ceremony? You know, using that term broadly. Mm -hmm. um, but is there some kind of a, don't like even a, go there. That's a long that's a long confusing conversation. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, counts. yeah, yeah, that's not a ceremony. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> so is there some kind of uh, tradition uh, tradition about the brewing? Let me say it that way. A tradition about the brewing, other than just that's how they brew it, um, or is there are there kind of social conventions around that? If you happen to know, um, I'm not sure, but I but my my understanding is it's sort of it, there's a social convention in that you know you you have a gathering of people in the same place or that all drink from the samovar because it's always there so tea drinking is a very social function and the samovar would be ready for whenever people showed up mm -hmm. I, I mean my that's sort of a, a an assumption and a generalization about any place that uses a samovar because it's designed to function that way right right you know with russian or or iran or um, afghanistan Kind of the same idea as the as the um, you know like the big coffee brewers that you find in you know church community halls. <laughs> right, right. Um, Those really you know, ugly like, things, with little pla black plastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's like it's like the uh, there's an assumption that when people gather, there's going to be this this hot beverage available for it for right. them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Exactly. So I'm, I just I keep going back to this uh, this music video that we talked about in the beginning on your, on yeah. your post about tea in the desert, and there's just I, there's some really cool things going on in there. Um, I love I just, the, the the one handed glass washing. There yeah. was the one handed glass washing, which was which was really interesting. There was also sort of like a seemingly purposeful dripping of water on the sand to kind of make a flat. Like, yeah. Serving surface, and there were a lot of things, and there was this really high up pouring, and it just, I don't know, they were all things that, well, not all of them, but some of the things were things I'd seen in sort of Indian tea culture, like the really high pouring to kind of cool the tea down, and then some of the things were things that I'd kind of seen in like Gong Fu Cha, or like the washing of the cups, sort of, yeah. and, uh, the, you know, purposeful spilling and overflowing of water kind of thing. And I'm just, I'm still kind of curious of like how, like, what's your sense? Are these traditions in these places? Are these um, just sort of invented independently and happen to look similar to other things? Or like, as you say, it was, it was, it came via the French, but the French. Well, were, no, I mean, no, I didn't say that tea culture came via the French. I said that's that's the the colonial context. But I, I don't think. Um, 
I don't think that that particular tradition is completely independent of any other uh, tea culture because I don't think things usually happen that way. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I can't I can't draw a straight line from from exactly where that comes from. But uh, they yeah, so I'm not I'm not sure. But there there are a lot of a, a lot of it is pretty logical, like what you would expect if you were developing a tradition of, of brewing tea. And I mean, the things like like uh, the pouring at a high altitude is specifically to aerate the tea, which which brings more flavor. By the way, that that we got to have a show about that um, mm -hmm. developing our own tea tradition. Let's say you know, like we could make make <laughs> one around. This is how you. <laughs> How you make tea? Yeah. Um, well, and, and yeah, to, let's to, call to, it a ceremony too. Yeah. What? Let's we'll call, call it a ceremony. ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, uh, but to bring it back to you, the also the pouring from the height um, occurred to me that uh, not only will that aerate it and and give it more flavor, but um, it would also cool it down, which is important right. if you're drinking out of a small nest. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, because glass is great for getting hot. <laughs> yeah. 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 When he was pouring things back in the pot, like there were several rounds of pouring mm -hmm. in the glass, pouring some of it back in the pot, pouring it back in a glass, pouring yeah. some of it back in a pot. Um, which I imagine, yeah, it cools uh, it. There cool. are a lot of, and I mean, from everything I've seen, those all of those rules are very specific. I mean, there are ways that that those particular countries do them the same way all the time and yeah. not you know not all the I mean the they don't do it the same way in Senegal as they do in Mali and right, right. And, but they're you know variations um, but uh, but I had never seen the uh, pouring water into the sand I mean and part of it part of it I, th I think is probably really symbolic but I can't really speak to that because I don't know exactly what is, um, but I think I think you know in watching that some of that is is obviously um, you know kind of aesthetic and and theatrical in a way too, mm -hmm. which you know it's all done in a way that's really interesting to watch, and that's not accidental, of course. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and my my partner when I mentioned the the one-handed hand washing, he's like, well, of course, it's a it's a Muslim country. Right, you know, oh. um, and so there's yeah. a lot of there's going to be a lot of uh, Muslim influence in terms of the importance of water, and washing, and um, right, uh, right. even even the one hand instead of both hands, and you know, like those kinds of um, those kinds of cultural things may seep in beyond just the the tea itself. Hmm. Well, of course, because any any tea tradition is is informed by the religion and the culture in which it's practiced. If it doesn't come out of that to begin with, which right. sometimes it comes out of religious practice to begin with, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't even have come have have been influenced by it. But it it's the other way around. Just like just like, and I'm going to go back to one of those more talked about cultures, uh, Zen yeah. and Zen and uh, the Japanese yeah. tea ceremony. Yeah. And Korea as well. A teaching tool almost. Yeah. Yeah, the two countries where uh, tea traditions are actually, some of them are actually ceremonies. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Huh. So, um, I, I know you have some lovely um, teaware uh, from some of these um, less talked about. Um, cultures, and I see that yeah. you have um, right tea museum. Me, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that uh, so part Marshall's of that Mar cabinet behind me is the tea museum. <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you say? Uh, do you want to show off a piece or two? Um, I'm trying you to think of what I have. Show mm -hmm. well? Well, I don't have any... Um, I don't have any Senegalese teaware with me. Can't show uh, that. <laughs> Anything well, else? <laughs> also, your your you know you talked about East uh, Eastern Africa and the um, obviously, I know you have some connections to companies um, in 
in Africa. Um, was was curious if you also wanted to talk about uh, about some of those. Um, you know, we kind yeah. of talked about North Africa, but let's. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just a second. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so yeah. One thing to to be aware of is the, the so the tea traditions in Kenya and uh, well, Kenya specifically were strongly influenced by the British, of course, but also influenced by Indians because there was a lot of uh, there are a lot of laborers that were that moved into Kenya that and there are a lot there are a lot of um, Indian spices that are now grown in East Africa. So in Kenya, the tradition of tea drinking is either British style or like a more like an Indian chai style um, with spices. So mm -hmm. and Somalia also drinks its own form of spiced chai. Right. That's that's actually very different tasting, at least to me. Than um, than Indian chai, and then in Ethiopia where there's okay, thank you. <laughs> so here's there's an interesting tea from Kenya. Speaking of Kenya, oh, yeah, is it a white tea? No, it is a black tea, but it's not fully oxidized. Oh, <clears throat> it's really it's amazingly sweet and huh. flavorful, but but that that a tea like that is actually very much not in the tradition of how people in Kenya would drink tea, right? Because they would drink really strong black teas right. with milk and sugar or uh, chai spices. Um, yeah. And so what I was going to say about the Ethiopian tradition of tea drinking is that they tend to use a spice blend that's um, clove cardamom and cinnamon and they will brew that into sort of a strong spicy infusion and then add the tea later at least that's the way that's the way I've seen it served but mm -hmm. their their tea traditions are not um, not quite as as um, as much of a of a process because in Ethiopia, the, there is a very formal um, coffee ceremony, and right. that and it, so tea is a more casual thing than coffee is there, um, which is an interesting thing to note. Yeah. You but know, it's, again, it's funny. That's where coffee you, came from. So. Right, right, yeah. When you started talking about Ethiopia, I was like, Ethiopia has a tea tradition, like. <laughs> Because yes. um, I know, because I know, um, I, ha I have had a couple of clients who were um, sort of doing for for coffee what what I'm doing for tea. They're kind of like really focusing deep on specifically Ethiopian coffee, and mm -hmm. and to talk to them, you wouldn't know that any tea gets consumed there. Um, well, uh, but... They also grow. <laughs> well, they grow tea in Ethiopia too. Really? How uh, do they? Yeah, it, it tends to be really astringent, and um, I've even had some Ethiopian-grown tea that had thyme added to it, which was pretty interesting. Oh, interesting. Um, but these are, like, designed to be milk teas, yeah? Mm, that one would be very weird if you put milk in it. <laughs> thyme? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which doesn't mean well, that it wasn't designed that way, but... Uh, you know um, the the talk of creating a con you know like a spicy concentrate and then adding the tea later kind of reminds me of the process in Tibet um, of of making although in in that case they're making a tea concentrate um, not in a samovar but making right. you know like a, a stew concentrate or a soup concentrate and then adding water later to to make yeah. it you know. Um, so that's interesting that, that it's the spices that are the sort of the starting point and the tea yeah. just gets added later. Yeah. So they, um, I've had it served that way in restaurants. I mean, even <laughs> around here where they'll, they'll bring the cup 
uh, with the with the spiced infusion that's already done. And I so I assume that that's probably uh, like sitting on some sort of burner sort of thing all right. day, just you know getting stronger, and then probably just add water. And that, but then they'll bring it to the to the table to the customer's table with a tea bag. So then it's the tea, tea is added and, effort because and, uh, then that. The, the black tea won't get astringent that way, um, right? And the spices—you right. don't have to worry about that. That actually it's makes sense because you need to brew the yeah. spices a lot longer than the tea. So. Right, 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 right. And that makes sense. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So this, so the the these traditions in Ethiopia and Kenya um, sounds like they're much newer than the North African traditions we're talking about, or are they? Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't know how far back they go, but probably not that. Probably less than a hundred years. Yeah. Uh, well, and Ethiopia well, has its own formation of any of those any of those traditions that don't have anything to do with having been colonized, because Ethiopia was never colonized by any Western right. countries. So. Yeah. Well, Kenya. Um, if if I recall, they didn't. Uh, the British didn't even bring in tea until the early 1900s. Like the the right. the planting didn't start until the 20th century, um, right. which probably the the start of that. You know, like like the tea yeah. culture probably didn't start until after that point. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm I'm sure that's true. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and but it it is. Caught on, I mean, partly because the climate in the in the growing region is so eff effective for tea that tea has become, you know, a key agricultural product and and has you know infused out into the culture itself. So mm -hmm. used, nice. All right. <laughs> good, good word choice. <laughs> oh. More tea puns. <laughs> no less. <laughs> Um, so we're we're getting near the end. Um, do you have anything that you think, um, you know, like what should we what should we ask you as a last question? Because we could just keep going on forever. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just, <laughs> tell us what we should ask you. Question to say, well, question you know, like I'm you? thinking, well, let's land the plane. And we've talked about so many things here. Maybe there's something that that you wanted us to ask about and we didn't, or whatever. <laughs> Um, I can't really think of anything offhand, although um, the, I just think it, it would be really interesting for people to, if they get the opportunity to actually experience um, tasting like Senegalese Ataya, because it's a really interesting, you know, very, you know, fairly old tea tradition that, that you can actually experience in various places, at least. In this part of the world, I mean, this part of the country, you can even so. Where, where, where would be I go? Be adventurous. This? <laughs> what was that? I said, be adventurous in your oh, tea yes. exploration. <laughs> so, yeah, we, so where do I, where do I go to experience this? Seattle tradition. <laughs> where can I do that? Columbia City. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. The, the the Columbia City area of Seattle is one of the most. Um, at least linguistically diverse um, areas of the country. Cool. Uh, yeah. So there's there's all kinds of cuisines and all kinds of traditions and all kinds of um, uh, yeah. And yeah, you're, you've got like an office there. Or you've got some kind of base there. Is that right? I have, yeah. Yeah. Well, what one of my other jobs is in the center of Columbia City, and one of the other places where I do work for two other companies is also in Clem Columbia City. <laughs> I remember when I met you, you handed me like 10 business cards. Like, here you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, but cool. you are currently you are currently at, so give you a little plug here, uh, currently at Phoenix Tea. I am. Um, and, and so uh, you do sell some of these uh, non- Non common, less common tea tradition country teas. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of interesting when you're talking about like West African traditions. The the teas are actually Chinese teas, so that you could 
you know, you could reproduce the tradition of a place with Chinese tea and mint from somewhere else, for example. But um, but we do have quite a range of teas from Kenya, and um, we don't have any Ethiopian teas, but because they're a little challenging. But um, you know, we we are on. You know, we're, I'm always looking out for for teas from unusual places just to round out how interesting things are. <laughs> right. Not just having <laughs> your Dragon Well and your Key Moon and your <laughs> right. Ascension. Right. Well, we have about we have probably about 140 teas in stock at any given time, so that gives us a lot of opportunity for right. expanding and keeping things interesting. Right. All right. Cool. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for uh, yeah, thank you. Very interesting yeah, conversation. Thanks for having me. It's been really interesting. It's it's cool to see that there are sort of tea cultures that are you know just as interesting and enticing mm -hmm. as Chinese tea and, and Japanese tea and places that we don't normally think about um, yeah. tea being yeah. a thing in. It's pretty neat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think probably um, you know what I would. Encourage is is just look around because there's so much, there's so much more, you know. There's a lot more out there than people expect. Mm. YouTube is a good place to find. Yeah, a lot I'm gonna be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out some <laughs> Senegalese tea on YouTube now. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I like I said on on the Gong Fu Girl YouTube channel, there are already a bunch of them that are saved. Um, oh, cool. Nice. That's a good place to start. Because I, I have everything categorized by country. Ah. Oh, yeah. good. Excellent. And we'll, um, uh, we'll be sure we'll to find that. that that link and put it in the in the show notes or the. Okay. Great. Yeah. We do. Um, and um, uh, those that are watching live, um, you can join us um, in the regular. Tea Geek Tea Salon that will be, uh, you know, informal, not broadcast, and we'll just sit around and chat some more about tea. So, um, if you're if you're watching this live, you'll be able to just look for the invitation on the Tea Geek uh, Google Plus page. Yep. All right. All right. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, until next time. How's our outro go? <laughs> Uh, think tea, drink tea. Drink tea, think tea, and talk tea. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks again. <laughs>